And now the Hansons and Hiatus podcast with Nate and Alexis. Happy Friday, fuckers. This is episode number 38 of Hansons on Hiatus. I'm your host, Nate, and this is my wife, Alexis. Hey, guys. How's it going? And don't forget to uh, support the podcast, buymeacoffee.com forward slash Hansons on Hiatus. You can find us on Spotify, YouTube for the video versions, and uh, lots of different platforms, wherever you listen to your podcasts, um, for, or the audio versions. So if you would like to, uh, if there's one that we're not on, please let me know, and I'll, I'll see if I can get us up on there. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, let's just jump right in, and um, last week we did, what we I think we talked about last week what we were doing yeah, and our la- last episode yeah so we, we had thanksgiving we had the soccer game we had jazz fest you know tons of different things fun filled weekend packed packed weekend per yes. usual. <laughs> <laughs> exactly um so thanksgiving let's see we did we i think last week we were talking about do we do it with friends do we just do it alone we kind of did a mix so yeah. we didn't do the our friends party that was like 30 some people or whatever um but we ended up our, our friend chrissy's in town yep so she, yep. So she st- uh, came over for a while while we we're getting ready because she was going to the other event. Mm-hmm. And um, then I was like, oh, we should invite our name because I was trying to think of like what other Americans are in our building you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, that might not have anywhere to go or yeah, whatever. Yeah. So we thought our neighbor, our neighbor upstairs, Sydney, that she uh, heard a little dog. Cheyenne yeah. is um, it was Tiger's kind of like little sidekick. You yeah, know, we would go to buddy. the beach together and everything like that. Um, and actually when we, I think it was when we were having Thanksgiving dinner, uh, she asked us if we'd be the godparents for yes, her. Yes, yeah. so excited. You were a godfather. Yeah. I'm a godmother. <laughs> oh shit, I am a godfather. You are. You're the, I don't know how he does it, but like, yeah. you're the godfather. Yeah, you gave me an offer, or made me an offer I couldn't refuse. Yeah, there you go. We <laughs> yeah. gotta watch the movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I literally have never seen it, so no. sorry. I but just, I just know the lines. I know it's like three hours long or three and a half hours Yeah, long it seems something. real long and boring, mm. but I don't know. Everybody loves it. Everybody does. Yeah, so for <laughs> Dinner we made um, what we call a Mexican Mexican turkeys, yep. which are just rotisserie chickens. Because, yep. <laughs> but yeah. from the good place, yeah, oh, not yeah. just anywhere. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, and what else do we make? Uh, I made mashed potatoes. Yeah, uh, green bean casserole. Green bean casserole and crispy the, little onions. Yeah, and the air fryer. Um, what else? Uh, we had the cranberry in a can. Yes, my favorite. Mm-hmm. Can't have Thanksgiving without cranberry in a can. Yeah, <laughs> some mac and cheese, some bun or some rolls. Yep. Yeah, we had, we had a pretty good little layout for uh, you yeah. know us four we, people. We had some beers, we had some drinks. Mm-hmm. You made uh, your your cider, your famous cider, right? And I sent it to our friends and uh, our one of our Mexican buddy Carlos. Mm-hmm. He he was like, oh. "Oh, it's um, what do you call it? Uh, Ponche Navideño." Yeah. Um. So I'm guessing that's like a Christmas punch or something. Um. He's like, "Oh, you guys made this." And I was like, "No, this is like this thing we make during." Thanksgiving and Christmas. Yeah. Didn't know it was like a Mexican punch, Had but no idea. yeah, it's basically just like apple cider, cinnamon, nutmeg, kind of all the stuff you put in a pumpkin pie, um, and then whiskey. Yes, whiskey's and the it, main part. <laughs> yes, and even though it's hot here, you know, we're like, whatever, we'll drink it anyway. It's, yeah. It just kind of makes us feel like we're in that spirit, even though it's like 100 degrees or whatever. It makes you feel like it's fall and the holiday and all that, and everybody loved it. It's good hot or cold. I mean, you want to drink it hot, but um, yeah, it was really yummy. And of course, we should have known that there was a, a Mexican drink after it or yeah. you know, similar yeah. to it. Who knew? <laughs> we should have known. Uh, so, yeah, everything went great. The food was delicious. We went up to the pool for a little bit, I think, right? Little I don't bit. think we swam. We just kind of hung out. Yeah, everything. Uh, I think we all decided we slept in a little bit later that day instead of like hitting it hard first thing and got cooking and um, just kind of like put the pool on the back burner a little bit. Yeah. Um, and I think we may have scared off our neighbor. I think we did. We did. Cause after we were done eating we're just kind of, you know, we're smoking and watching Drinking like more. football and stuff. But then after the uh, football is over, we we're like, Oh, let's watch uh, some show, you know, just like some little episode. Yeah. And we watched this show called uh, Homicide for the Holidays. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just that crazy bitch network murder shows. Yeah. And you like, we like to play like whodunit. Like, why would they do this? Yeah. If they were going to say that to them, that didn't make any sense. <laughs> and it's like the Oxygen Channel, isn't it? Yeah, or I think one so. Of the, it's Oxygen. Very bizarre. Yes. Yeah. Oh, wait, no, yeah. that's investigate. Investigate. Yeah. yeah. ID investigate. Yeah. Whatever. They look <laughs> yeah. the same. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she actually, our little. Um, you know, our Roku or whatever you used showed up all the 
the images, like the thumbnails, and she's like, "Ooh, what's homicide for the holidays?" And we're like, "Oh, yeah. you got it. We got to watch." And one. so we started telling her about it. And we're like, eh, "It's like this murder show," and we kind of try to figure out who did it. And they usually start off by explaining the murder and you know showing some a little bit of the crime scene stuff. Yeah. It's usually not too bad, like the history and stuff. Yeah, and then they start going into the backstories, and then you go in, and then that's when we try to investigate. Yeah, um, <laughs> investigate. So we we. The one, the Thanksgiving one, I think we'd already seen. So we're like, we'll go to the previous one. And it happened to be like, I think a Halloween one. Yeah. And it starts off and it was saying like this, whenever you see the cops and their story is, I've been doing this for 35 years and this is the worst murder I've ever seen in my life. I will yeah. never sleep again. That's uh, it's Even not a good I'm sign. I'm not going to sleep. Yeah. And it was like this, wo- a pregnant woman was Ugh. murdered and they had like, then they start going into saying like, she was like gutted and the the yeah. fetus was like on the ground and yeah. stuff and, Lots of blood. and Lots of blood. <laughs> her neighbor's like yeah so um i think i'm gonna go yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was like seven o'clock or eight o'clock we're like oh are you sure we can change it she's like nah, i'm good <laughs> yeah so uh it's a good show but that was the probably the most graphic episode that was the most graphic and we just watched like like you said the christmas and thanksgiving episode that the halloween one was yeah it was, it was a bit mm-hmm. much usually they're a little more like campy you can figure it out like, there's always blood and murder but not like that was a lot that was a bit Close yeah. to home, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Did like it. Um, so, yeah, we had a good Thanksgiving. That was on, uh, like, was it last Thursday? Yeah. And I think we ate Thanksgiving for the next, like, three or four days. Oh, yeah, that was great. That's the best part of cooking your own Thanksgiving is you get to eat all the leftovers. Yeah. Because, you know, some people don't give you the leftovers. That's uh, our main thing, I think, why we didn't go to, like, the big party or, you know, even back home, we were kind of hesitant to go to things. I yeah. like going and doing holidays with our friends, but we are very particular about, like, our... Um, you know, things we do every year and our traditions and um, our leftovers. Yeah. I want cold turkey the next day. I don't want like a tiny little plate. You know, I want like all my things. Oh, yeah. And then we <laughs> always make these uh, Mexican leftover Thanksgiving tacos. Yes. Where we take uh, some of the turkey slash chicken, put it in the tortilla, yep. then put some mashed potatoes on it, some green bean casserole, and then top it off with a little bit of cranberry, <laughs> a little jelly cranberry. Little mm-hmm. Cranberry bay. Yeah, cranberry bay, baby. <laughs> That's me. That's my name. Yeah, yeah. Cranberry Bay. Cranberry Bay. <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, we had a good time, it was and good. you know, ate all the leftovers. So that was great. They're all good. Uh, but then the next day on Friday, we went to uh, the Inter Playa football soccer match. Yes. Um, and football we've just match. got really into this team. I feel bad we hadn't previously, but it's hard to, like we said, it's hard to find the information about when the fucking games are. No one wants to like give you information on social media or websites here. It's just like. Good luck. We'll tell you when the day of. And we're like, ah, scrambling. So if you ever heard us talk about this previously, usually what we do is we go to this um, sports bar that's right next to the stadium and they do, was it 69 peso liter liter beers? Um, So that's like three, four bucks for a fucking big ass mug. And and we did that... uh, the like Stein holding thing. Yeah. You know, that like, was, tried to hold it out. I think my shoulder still hurts from it or my elbow. <laughs> yeah. one or the other. So we did that. And then um, we were, the kickoff was happening soon, but we still had a little bit of beer left and we had to run to the gas station uh, or convenience store because yeah. they sell beer there and it's fairly cheap. It's like 40 pesos, but it's Tecate yeah. and I hate Tecate. Tecate light too. Um, oh yeah. Too, Either uh, one. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if I had to, like I'll drink it, but I would never select it on purpose. Lo siento, Tecate. Yeah. Um, yeah. I guess they're not sponsoring this. No. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but so we, we usually go and bring our own beer in. We have a, our cooler and we weren't really sure what the situation was bringing your own shit in. Yeah. We saw people in the stands with their own stuff, but we didn't know if you had to hide it or, or what the situation was. Yeah. Um, so we were hiding it the first couple of games and, you know, there's a beer guy that walks around and he kind of, he doesn't hassle you, but he, he makes sure he's like, Hey, do you need another beer? You need yeah, a beer? You he's need a beer? Watching, like, and so it's nice to have that. Cause they're only like two bucks for a beer, yeah. but he, he carries them around in a bucket with like a big chunks of ice in it. <laughs> yeah. It's like a paint bucket, like a home Depot right. bucket, <laughs> which is, I mean, it's smart. It works, I guess. Yeah. So <laughs> this, this is our third game this season. And I, we kind of figured out, like, we think it's OK, you just like, you know, but we were still a little hesitant. And so uh, the guy came over and uh, he came back around the backside of us and we were like, didn't even see. Him. No, we had all of our beers out and stuff. We were making drinks like we were making like micheladas or Someone something. had wine, a whole bottle of wine. Yep, yep. We were like, hide everything. <laughs> we're like, oh, my God. So he comes back around and I'm like deer in headlights. Oh, shit. You know, he's like, uh, cerveza, cerveza. And we're like, no, nah, we're good or whatever. And then. We felt like we felt kind of bad because that's literally his job. 
He's really yeah. nice too, and like mm-hmm. every game we've come to, he like comes up to us and is very attentive. Like, yay, drinkers! And, yeah, you know. He's so cool. we gave between all of us, we gave him like a hundred pesos, which is like five bucks, yeah. to not bring us beer. Yeah. Like after he saw us with our stuff, it wasn't like we were paying him off to like not say anything. Yeah. It was like literally, don't bring that Tecate over here, um, yeah. and we'll be good. So we're we'll just tip you. Good. So I'll just give you a tip every time, just to not make us drink that beer yes actually you felt bad you were like let's buy a couple beers you know we can give him you know he's working whatever so we called him over and you're gonna give him the money for the beers you're like two beers he brings them back and then we all had decided like no we're just we don't even want the beer just take the tip so we tipped him and he was like oh my god thank you so much like he was so happy we're like we love you but don't bring us those beers yeah <laughs> yeah so that was we nice. don't want them yeah um <laughs> But then, so the game is ending and we look over, you know, the crowd's starting to clear out and we look over and there's, you know, a good amount of people on the side, uh, in the stands mm-hmm. and there's a dog sitting there, like this little white puppy, not real little, but you know, young, a young pup. A pup. So cute. Yeah. So we're like, watching. who the fuck brought their dog to the soccer yeah. game? And I'm mad. I didn't know. I yeah. Could I was bring like, my we could have brought Tiger this whole time. He would have loved it. He Ex- loves football. Exactly. So, <laughs> uh, so we're kind of watching him and the crowd's walking down and they're all looking at him and then. Uh, we realize there's no family with this dog. Nope. <laughs> this dog is sitting there watching the soccer game yeah. just for fun. I'm pretty sure it was a stray dog. I'm pretty and sure. And he's like, is. fuck this shit. I'm going to go get some inter- interplay in my life. Yes. He came a little late, though. <laughs> yeah, he was. Yeah. He's like, well, speaking of a little late, we missed the first three goals because. Yeah. We uh we were like 15 minutes late. We were trying to finish our <laughs> giant litros of beer. There were a lot. It was probably me. It's probably my fault, actually. Yeah. But yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> so we're we're continuing to watch this. Uh, everybody kind of file out, and some people are kind of going over to him and trying to like pet him. And he's not he's not growling, but he's like very skittish, yeah. like standoffish. I, I think when people were starting to get a little close, like put their hand up to him, he was like, mm. mm-hmm. they're like, eh, yeah. I don't and want so, rabies today. And so I walk uh, over, like kind of at the top of the stadium, Mm -hmm. like back around the backside of him. And there's this teenage kid that's gone over there and he's just sitting with him. And he's just, it was like a beautiful moment. Very patient. Yeah, yeah, it was. And he was just, (laughs) you know, not trying to like pet him and get in his face. He was just kind of like scooching a little bit closer, closer. And then he just sat by him, maybe a couple feet away. And it was just like, it was a Hallmark moment, Alexis. It was. It was was so cute. (laughs) It was really cute. He was like, instead of just going full force in, he's being patient and getting a little closer Gaining the puppy's trust. <laughs> yes, exactly. And so when we're we you know go down from the the stands and then we see this family and we can hear them talking and it's like their son that's up there. Yeah. And it sounds like they're on vacation mm-hmm. and they were like we're just gonna let him stay here and you know we probably eventually bring this dog home. Yeah. So they I think they were gonna like adopt this dog and take him home to I think they're from the UK. They had a British accent, right? Yeah, they did. Yeah. So they looked like really nice people. Like they were standing there. We're not leaving until we help this dog or know yeah. where this dog goes or you know something. They were yeah. trying to give them food and water yeah so very beautiful moment at the soccer game beautiful but i'd like to see that this dog or i'd like to think that this dog just snuck in and went and watched the game because he's like yeah (laughs) none of my friends want to go with me so i'm just gonna go (laughs) i thought maybe he slept there and he's like can y'all clear out because this is my bed yeah like like, i sleep here get the fuck out i'm waiting for some two dollar tecates yes (laughs) i'm gonna clean up your guys snacks that you left here yeah so that was a lot of fun um know um they're still good people in the world yes that's yes. right yeah so that was a lot of fun uh, then the following day we had jazz fest we did. and we didn't and i think last week we talked about um you know not being like a ton of good live music in playa which yeah. there is there's there's live music like every night but every there's night. not like famous like live concert, musicians concerts. and stuff yeah. yeah so we didn't really know what to expect because this thing has been jazz fest has been going on for 20 years but it's been on hold for the last two or three years because of pandemic and funding right. and stuff like that um so we're like, let's do it. So we're trying to organize with this group of friends, and it's always, you know, a little difficult because everybody's kind of all over the place sometimes. Everyone, I mean, Playa just takes you every which way. Totally, <laughs> totally understand it. But uh, we're like, all right, let's just go. We'll meet everybody there. Yep. And then when we got there, our we went with our friends Marlos and Jorge, and they were waiting, or they like kind of got separated from us, yeah, because uh, they were talking to a friend or something. They saw some friends yeah, and too. then you and I got separated for some reason. Yeah. Like, uh, I don't know if you went to the restroom or what, or you were going to try to find the other friends. I was trying to find the girls' group and all, you know, our our playa group or whatever. <laughs> you were taking video, I think. Yeah, <laughs> didn't realize that uh, there was no cell so cell phone service there because there were so many people so many people in one little area and it just wasn't good yeah it it was just over like i was sending all messages and stuff but 
I loved it because I got to be old concert date. <laughs> where I just fucking wander off, I weasel my way up I front, <laughs> and I get some good video of the band because I don't have a you know everybody else I'm dragging along with you slackers, um, but uh, but it was fun. It was a good time. I think that's why I split off. I was like, "You're about to go, go be free, Nate. Do your Nate things, your videos and stuff. I'm gonna yeah. go find our friends, <laughs> and then I'll check in with you." But yeah, nothing was going through. We're trying. Even WhatsApp wasn't working. I was trying everything. It it just yeah. But really cool festival was right on the beach. Very set cool. up the the huge stage. The stage was and, awesome. Um, it was really cool because everybody could like swim. I mean, it was at night, but there's there's dudes in the water fucking swimming at night and then watching the concert. Yeah, and, yeah. I'm shocked they didn't have like a couple little lifeguards out there yeah. or something. It's Mexico. <laughs> yeah, I know, but you never know. <laughs> but when I was waiting by myself, I was waiting in the line for the the porta potties, and you know, it was long line. You know, you know when people just walk right in front of the lines at yeah. the porta potties, and then they like look all like. Like Ugh. flustered when they got ran into by some dude. I'm shocked there's eight equally divided lines behind these bathrooms. Yeah, Why? I, what could that be? I just can't cut in front of everybody. What? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it was funny. I was standing in line. I was like second uh, up to be, you know, going to the use the restroom. And this guy comes comes walking by, totally oblivious as as usual, mm-hmm. smoking a cigarette. <laughs> and right when he was the right before the restroom, I was going to use the the next one over. The guy comes out, flings open the door. <gasps> And he had the cigarette in his mouth. It goes doing. <laughs> like a cartoon. Yeah, it was l- legit like a cartoon. <laughs> that's for smoking yeah, and like, that's for cutting. That's what you get, bitch. Karma. That's like instant karma. Yeah. Uh, was he like, uh, oh, and then got back in line? No, or? it was just like everyone else here. When you almost run into them, they just uh, don't say anything. Just, well, oh, kind of whatever. Uh, yeah. There's something. I don't even. It's not just locals. It's not just tourists. When people come to this area, it's like there's so much to look at. All rules go out of the window. Yeah, they're like, no one knows how to wait in a single file line. No one knows how to be courteous or say excuse me or get out of each other's way. It's it's insane. I don't I don't understand it. Yeah. <laughs> and so while I was still lost, I decided to go get some beers because you could like you. They said you couldn't bring your own beers, but nobody was doing anything about it. So. Everyone had coolers and giant wheelie coolers and all sorts of stuff. Yeah. And so I decided to go get some from the the convenience store. And while I'm going over there, I see this guy getting, like, arrested by the policia. And they're, like, searching through his bag and everything. Uh -uh. And earlier, I was walking by that guy, and he goes, Hey, buddy, do you want some more sugar for your booger? (laughs) (laughs) So I'm guessing he was uh, selling some Coke. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to say you're probably right. Yeah. Sugar for your booger. Yeah, yeah. But do you have any... So that was my adventures in Jazz Fest. Do you have anything going on? Oh, gosh. We were, uh, you know... I know you had that band by you. We did. So I don't know how it's pitch black on the beach and all the lights are like to the side of the stage for some reason, lighting up that mermaid statue. So I just I looked at the map when I had it to try and find the pin for the girls. And I just kept walking in the dark. And then finally I found one girl and I found them all. So we're sitting there and the the next band starts, the next jazz band. And I'm like confused. I'm like, why do I hear two different sets of music? There's a Mexican band on like mariachi band on the beach in front of the jazz band playing. And they're like, oh, yeah, they were playing in between sets of the jazz concert. There's they said they're going to stop. Never stopped. They never stopped once. So I'm like, can we move? Can And there's like 30 people, you know, in a blanket and everybody has things. And I'm like, can we move up? Like, we can't even hear the the jazz concert. So finally, one of the one of our friends, Melissa, is like executive decision picks up all the shit and half the people are in the bathroom getting drinks, taking photos, swimming. Everyone's everywhere. Picks up all the shit. We help her move it up more and plop back down. Then we have a whole nother set of issues. Everyone's trying to find us. No one has service. It was insane. I heard you took some guy's sandals. I I did not. Jeremy, I'm sorry. I don't know where your fucking sandals are. (laughs) I picked up some girl's sandals. It was none of our girls, so I have some of these sandals. I think she took Jeremy's, and then I took this girl's. She was like, oh, Oh, shit. But I gave them to Jeremy. (laughs) That band, man. Like, what what balls to go to a concert and be like, you know what? They want to hear my music at this concert. I will say they were very good. They had a nice little setup, one of those giant speakers. They all had instruments. Not the time and the place. Why are no. you taking away from other locals playing at the jazz fest? You know, move it down a little bit more because right. you could barely even hear them. You know those memes that are like, uh, it, this one would be like, uh, oh, maybe I should play some music in between the bands at the jazz jazz fest, and it's like absolutely no one, absolutely or, no, <laughs> like yeah. nobody wants this. That was it. <laughs> oh, and then one other thing. So when we actually moved 
Um, it was dark, so we didn't even realize. She picks the spot. We all start kind of like sitting down, and then we look over, and um, there's cop like the little quads or the four wheelers. They're just lined up next to us. They didn't have any of their lights on, didn't even see him parked there. They flip all their lights on. So Shit. we're all literally sitting next to the cops like, uh, we need to move again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Well, it was a good weekend. It had, was. Had a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Um, saw lots of people. Well, we had enough time uh, to all hang out this weekend because you recently quit your job. Kind of quit slash got let go. Yeah, quit. I don't yeah, <laughs> I was sense. saying you got fired before, but you didn't really. You basically quit, right? Yeah. So what was the situation? What's going on? And uh, and to uh, like refresh everyone, you were working for this not is a non profit or not for profit? I don't know. It's a it's, it's a, a volunteer organization. Yeah, it's a company that sets up volunteer opportunities for you know like if a big company says hey like we got like fifty employees and we're on the. Uh, like we, we're going to this conference in Phoenix and we want our employees to volunteer here yeah, like, or whatever. So Have you guys would manager. take care of all the logistics of that. Yeah, we were pretty much a third party. We set everything up. Your company wants to volunteer. I think we, we had like big name Marriott, UCF, Sugar Bowl. Like we're dealing with big names. The Booger Sugar Bowl? The Booger Sugar Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never get that out of my head. Nope. <laughs> but we're doing, you know, we're coordinating this. Some people work on transportation, some are housing, some are food, whatever. So we're dealing with this. The the man that owns this company and is a newer company, they're like, I mean, they're eight, probably eight years old. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's still up and coming. Great purpose, great, you know, things, great people, volunteering. Everything's great. Work remote. Don't care where you're working from. Anywhere in the world, like It checks all the boxes of a remote job that you want, as well as helping people. The man that owns this company is insane. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know how else to sell it. Very micromanager, like can't let go. Talks terribly to people. Talks terrible. And when I first interviewed, he's from New Jersey, grew up in New Orleans pretty much. But I was like, oh, I'm from Pittsburgh, you know, all over the place. He's a traveler. I talked to this guy. You remember my first interview was like two hours almost. We talked a lot. Um, And then uh, he's like, you know, letting me know I'm I'm kind of abrasive sometimes or like blunt. And I swear. And I'm like, I fucking swear all the time, too. Great. Mm -hmm. We'll be fine. I was like, I'm from the East Coast. You're not going to offend me unless you're like trying to offend me. He (laughs) he would just say, like, talk down to people, you know, especially the women. And it's a majority of women at this company. I just couldn't stand it anymore. And the feedback from the other employees are, he's always been this way. It's not getting better. It's the typical guy that owns a company doesn't necessarily know how to manage people. Right. That's why you hire managers. Right. Because they know how to not not micromanage people right. and delegate and not lose their minds over everything and speak exactly. speak down to people and yell at them and scream at them. Yeah. It was like the talking down to and just like, the- you fucking idiot. Yeah, he wouldn't even say that, but he would say, you know, like, well, why did you do this? Well, why? Why? Look, this is this and that is that. Was that hard? And you're just like, ooh, no. At Uh, nine in the morning, like, for, and it would be every day. It wasn't like, some days were good, most days were bad. So I just couldn't put up with that anymore. And from the time I started, uh, three people quit. One was fired, actually. And then I just heard another one quit or was let go it's just like there's a high turnover rate that should have my experience past work experience should have been red flag red flag red flag and there were but i was just thinking at the time that there's 90 percent good of this job yeah and when you would complain about it or you know just vent about it i would say you know i i know i know these types of people i've worked with them but you're doing a job where you can literally just wake up and go to your computer. So right. it's like, it's so nice. Thankful, and they're cool grateful. with you working out of Mexico and paying yeah. you from the U S and stuff like that. So. Yeah. You don't say that, but no I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's fine. You can do that. You just have to file taxes in the U S yeah, true, true, true. Yeah, which so, we do. So, which we do. Um, but yeah, it was just, it was too much. And, and the, there's a lot of good people he has working there. A lot of good people on the team, and he's yeah, trying the to... ones he's sleeping with. Oh, that was another thing. So bombshell at the end. I'm I'm leaving. I I say you know. Yeah. The... Well, how, how did you oh. quit? I guess. Oh, not very professionally. Kind of no, professionally. No, but I think not professionally. For, for the what was going on, I don't think that was any less professional than how this person was right. acting. He pretty much kind of almost 
he gave me an ultimatum like uh, at the end of it next week if we're not seeing progression on a b and c then we might have to part ways or this isn't working which i know he says to pretty much everybody to mm-hmm. kind of like get kick yeah. their ass he in thinks the that's motivation yeah which i'm motivated already i'm doing my job i'm doing what you ask of me but his things were like it was never good yeah. enough or like well, the the minute details that he wanted were right. more important than the bigger picture and when you manage people if you treat them like that and and scare them and threaten them with their jobs and stuff, right. the employee will only work hard enough to not get fired. Right. They're never going to go above and beyond for you. So you, you can't treat people like that. And he would say that, too. I don't understand why people don't want to work extra. I'll pay them this and that or go that extra mile or think ahead. You're not you're, number one. You're not paying people enough to do that. And number two, you're not treating them well enough to do that. So um I uh, was on a Zoom call. It was like my last week, maybe. Mm -hmm. And uh, every day was something. Every day, something, something, something. Wednesday came, we're on a Zoom call, and he just starts lighting me and these other two girls up for like really no... These are... These are easy tasks. These are easy things. We're not doing brain surgery or saving lives or anything like that. He was talking to all three of us and primarily one of the girls um, just terribly. I, I was like, I, I can't take it anymore. And I just got out of the Zoom. And then he immediately messaged me. was like, hey, are you coming back? Looks like we lost you. And I was like, no, I cannot work in this toxic environment anymore. I, I think today is my last day. And he was like, oh, oh, uh, OK, like, no problem. I, you know, this and that. We got to get everything. Mind you, everything was already rocky this week. And he's just if he was expecting me to possibly leave on that Thursday, he was piling more work on me too. Like he didn't even take his own threat seriously. Which is another reason why owners shouldn't be managers Mm -hmm. of their own employees as well. Because anybody will tell you, you, if, even if you think things are leaving on like good terms, like you, you get rid of these people that that have said that they're going to quit or whatever, because they're either not going to, I'm not saying you, but like people will not do their jobs for the last couple of days or they'll fuck shit up on purpose because they're mad. So like, why are you going to let somebody with all your passwords and login and, and contacts and stuff who's like, you know, disgruntled and quitting, why are you going to let them stay around? Like, I I mean, it's nice when they do, but, uh, but it's definitely a risk. (laughs) It's It's very shocking. I was shocked too, that he was just like giving me more work to, to then pass off to other people and it was just ridiculous and then there was a, a bombshell after i kind of left one of the girls messaged me and everybody he has really nice people working there he did pick nice employees and everything but um i made some i mean out of the whole job i got paid pretty well for a few months and um a lot of i made new friends and a lot of them live in playa here so that's great but uh, one of the girls was like, I have to talk to you before you leave, this and that. We jump on a Zoom. She's like, I'm so sorry it didn't work out. And she's talking, you know, like, I'm, I want to leave too and this and that. And then she goes, I have to tell you something. And I'm like, oh, God, what? I'm just, I, I have no idea what she's going to say. And she's like, so me and Boss Man have been uh, dating off and on for the last couple years. I almost died i just covered my face on the zoom and was like ah how are you dating this man he talks and the girl that he's dating he talks to her the worst i would punch him in the face every day <laughs> like oh my God. physically punch him i she she's hispanic she's venezuelan so i know she is she's like i have a sick sense of humor i'm not as like touchy and i'm like i'm really not that touchy but he talks to her and she gives it right back but um that was a that was a big shock and kind of like filled in a lot of the gaps for me. I was yeah, like, like, okay, now I out. see the red flags. Now sense. I see the connection. So, <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Hi, hi I'm jobless again. Yeah, breath of fresh air, though. So, but yeah, yes. if anybody else um, ha- needs any remote work done, yeah. let, let us know. Customers, Lexus is available. Customer service, graphic design. You know, of course, we're doing this and we're doing some other. You do side stuff. I do side mm. stuff. But looking for kind of like a steady remote work or whatever so yeah it was good like all right yeah. well um i think we we have a listener question brian well i think we'll get to yours next week sorry um but basically <laughs> before we get out of here next or actually sorry tomorrow you're going to the boat show with the ladies i am boat show it's uh we what did it do you do there are people really buying coming to mexico to buy boats i 
I mean, these are like huge yachts, like oh, okay. million Maybe. dollar yachts. So everybody brings them in and shows them off. And there's all these like vendors and sponsors. But we went last year with the girls. It's the annual Cancun boat show. Uh, we had a great time. There was barely anyone there. We got into VIP for free. We had like a great day. It was, you know, a bunch of girls in the commuter van go up. We're drinking and laughing and all that stuff. Nice. But um, uh, my best friend is here and her birthday is on December 23rd. So we're moving it up and celebrating it this weekend in Cancun. So we're going to have lots of fun, oh, lots of drinks, cool. lots of food. Pretty ladies. Weird question, but do you think if boats are made somewhere else, like a, let's say there's a boat company in the United States. Do they do they drive the boats down here? Or like they usually put them on like trailers and right. then like drive them here or yeah, it seems I guess. kind of like counterproductive, right? Yeah, <laughs> like, it does. Like or, we made this thing that can go on water, but we're going to drive it on land. Well, you or, don't want to get it, you yeah. know, or maybe or, it's in a, it's probably in a shipping container. It right? probably something is something like that. It's probably but, on a carrier boat or something like yeah. that. I was like, how boat. do you get that job? Just driving boats to Mexico? <sighs> I wouldn't do, want do. that job because if you fuck up one little inch, woo, you're, that, that's a lot. Yeah, yeah. I guess when you get it, you you can't have like seawater all over it yeah. and stuff. But the port in Cancun's really pretty. It's like this big circle and um, Is it by where we go to Isla Mujeres? Yes. Yeah. Port over there. It's like the God of Seas Cove or something uh, like that it's called. I don't dumb. but it's really pretty. Big houses, all these shops and restaurants that are super expensive. But you kind of just walk around. You can go on the yachts. They make you take your shoes off and they'll kind of show you around and that's the fun part. Going on each yacht and they're like Oh, this is only eight point five million dollars, and you're like, oh, we'll we'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, between I was the... really looking for the bigger one, but yeah. I guess I'll settle. Let me get thirty of my closest friends to buy this with me. <laughs> yeah. But it's it's a good time. Oh, uh, good. All right. Well, <laughs> excited to hear some stories about that. I'm gonna be solo brolo trip this I'm, weekend. I'm sure you're so upset about it. I know. You're gonna find nothing to do. I, know. I can't find anybody to do anything with. Everybody's busy. You need like you had guy friends here. I have suddenly, guy friends. They're just so like go, yeah, they're just... like traveling or back in the states or whatever. So or working. Um, Maybe this is your weekend to find new guy friends. True. <laughs> Let's go hit the bars, look at some for some dudes. Yeah, what's put up, out the vibe. Bro? You want to share a beer yeah. and some snackies? Yeah, what's it? <laughs> I'm gonna split these. Actually, that's how I met one of the guys. Uh, that yeah, Troy guy. The one was, guy. I was just sitting at the bar and he was like, "Hey, do you want some of my cheese balls?" And yeah. I was like, "Okay." <laughs> I think that's. Do nice. they taste like roofies? <laughs> Yeah, but no, he's a good dude. So yeah, I did message him. Um, but yeah, anyway, so it should be a good weekend. We'll have some stories next week. Uh, but we, before we get out of here, don't forget to support the podcast. Buymeacoffee.com forward slash Hanson's on hiatus. Uh, follow us on uh, Instagram at Hanson's on hiatus. And then the same thing on Spotify, uh, YouTube, all the all the podcast channels. So all the podcasts. yeah, so all the th things. thank you for listening. We'll catch you next week. Happy Friday, fuckers. Happy Friday, fuckies. That's it. Thanks for listening. Goodbye for now. Bye. -y 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 -y.